Inset is one of the more interesting operations inside of BoxCutter because it derives the shape in order to create the operation. So to demonstrate it in action, we'll select this cube and press Q and go under Mesh Tools and we're just going to sphere cast it to turn it into a sphere. I'll press D and inside the helper, we'll just change over to Ngon and I'm going to just click, click, click and click and we're just gonna click on this last point and extrude this out. And from here, I'll press I in order to change this into an inset. And the interesting thing about inset is unlike the rest of the cutters or the rest of the operations, this one actually excels a bit whenever it comes to curved surfaces because it derives the geometry. However, um, to further explain it, at least completely in depth, let's press Q and control click bevel to just add a bevel. And we see that after adding a bevel, it definitely gets a little bit crazy with the surface. And that's because of the whole derived mesh aspect of inset. So if we press Alt V, we can jump into wireframe and we see that there's some near misses where geometry is just getting a little clustered up close to the area where the bevel's trying to go. So at this time, I do recommend, you know, adding a weld modifier and then we can shift scroll it above bevel. And as we roll it, we see that it begins to clean up a little bit. However, this is only a kind of temporary measure since we do see it kind of eating away at the edge boundary a little bit, causing it to get a little bit compromised but it definitely looks a little bit better now than it does without a weld. If we were to turn it off, we can see what it looks like. So that's kind of one aspect of inset. However, if we were to bring in another cube and turn it into a sphere again and go into inset again, we could talk about another aspect of it that's interesting and unique to it. And that is that if we were to inset this, we could press D and there's an option for basically inset slice. And so what I like to do is inset first so I see what's going on and then I'll inset slice which will basically give me back a very nice slice that's contoured to the surface that I can use for things like transformation for revealing what's underneath. So it's a common thing that I like to do and work sometimes. But the other thing about inset that makes it unique is that because it derives the geometry, it can also derive failure. And so if I were to basically draw a box and we place it right here, very close to this edge. If we were to basically draw a box around this and press I and jump into inset, we don't even see anything. If we press T, it's just gonna begin flashing. And so this is a common thing I'm sure a lot of users run into. Whenever they first begin using box cutter, they begin um, using inset on a surface that's been compromised with areas that just aren't good for solidification and this sort of thing occurs. So, you know, I'm personally not a very big fan of this issue. And so it's our goal to definitely come up with a way to mitigate this issue from happening. And the best way to do that is actually to derive the inset from the original mesh that doesn't have that original box that we cut into at present. So if we press D, after pressing pause, if we press D, there's an option for recut, which allows us to basically derive it from the original mesh. And if we press T, we see that we're able to cut all the way through this thing. And that's really just the uh, power of recut. When it was missing, I was like, wow, we really got to get that thing back quickly because when it comes to inset, there's no way to really protect yourself if you have a bunch of cuts and you're trying to derive an inset. So to show it again, I could just cut a box here or even a box here. And because of what's going on with the edge and the way solidify is going to react, the solidify isn't going to be able to get very big and perform the inset. So if I press I and we press T, we see that we've run into a problem. Well, this is where we can pause it, press D and activate recut, which as we see updates the mesh in real time, allowing us to get back what we're losing. And so you got to keep in mind that this is using a inset based on the unmodified mesh. So it's not going to have the circle cut that we have in here or the box cut we have taken into account but it definitely will help you get control back over your inset whenever you're working on it. 